Hey there, my name's Leo, and this guide will show you how to effectively solo the Bandos God Wars boss, General Grador, and his minions. Starting off with the basic information you should know before you decide to go for a solo. General Grador is located in the God Wars dungeon inside the Bandos stronghold. To enter his stronghold, you'll need 40 kill count. You gain this by killing Bandos creatures inside the God Wars dungeon. Once you have 40 kill count, you can simply walk in. The creatures that you should kill to get Bando's kill count consist of level 120 goblins, level 124 ogres, level 124 jurgers, level 130 hobgoblins, level 130 cyclopses, level 136 orcs. You can also kill spiritual rangers, warriors, and mages if you have the slayer level. It is advisable to kill goblins though, as they are quick and easy. Level 70 strength is required to open the Bando's stronghold door. If you do not have this, however, I do not suggest trying to kill General Grador, as you will not do much damage and it will be inefficient. You also need a hammer, however the one in your tool belt will be fine. Be aware, when you die at the God Wars dungeon, you will need to get kill count again. This can take over 10 minutes, and if you are low level, you will not be able to get back to your grave. This is why you should have the longest lasting grave possible, or even a friend to bless you in case you die. Just be aware. It is high risk, and if you die, you can lose your items very, very easily. Only take things you are willing to lose, especially if, you, if you're a newbie to God Wars. Also bring a Zamorak item, such as a Zamorak arrow, and any Bandos item, or next item. This will stop the followers of Zamorak, Bandos, or even all of them, being aggressive, speeding up kill count, and taking less damage, saving food. Getting there. Getting to the God Wars dungeon is fairly simple in itself. Just follow the route I take and you'll get there fine. Don't worry about the throw trolls, they won't do much damage. If you have not completed Edgar's ruse, you'll have to run there. You'll need to take a pair of climbing boots or rock climbing boots. Just follow my route. The throw trolls don't do much damage, but if you like you can take a bit of food or something and just eat up. It will waste it for the actual boss, but if you can't tank throw trolls, I don't think you'll be very good at tanking General Grador. As you run across this ice plateau, your run energy will be drained, and it will drain your stats very slightly. Don't worry about this, your run recharges very fast, and your stats will become normal very quickly. You see here mine go back to normal as soon as I enter the dungeon. If you want to have more infantry space, just look at what I do. When I teleport, I drop two food, and I teleport back to Edgeville, go to the bank, grab a couple of runes, grab some more food, and teleport back. When I'm teleporting back, my runes will be used, therefore there'll be two inventory spaces. I can pick up the food I dropped, meaning no inventory spaces have been used. This is good to do, as you'll be able to last longer at Bandos. These are just some of the setups that I could use. These are the setups I advise the Varax and the Bandit's Godsword being my suggested minimum you should take. However, I will go into more depth about this later on. If you are soul splitting, I suggest you use these inventory setups. You can improve them and lower them depending on what you have. For example, you can switch out to my defense potions for overloads. These will of course be a lot better. You can switch the rock tails for sharks. You're bringing the food in case you get hit a lot and you need to eat up. You don't want to die. However, you shouldn't need to use this much. You should bring prayer renewals because this means you do not have to concentrate on your prayer as much, meaning you can concentrate more on DPS. Inside your familiar, you should have twice as many renewal flasks slash restores or whatever flasks you're using to restore your prayer as rock tails. In a Yak you should have 20 Restore Flasks and 10 Rock Tails, and you should have 6 Rock Tails and 12 Flasks if you're using a 
or tortoise. If you're not sword slitting though, I suggest that you switch six of your flasks for rock tails or your best food and your beast of burden should be full of food. This is because your prayer will not be drained as fast and it will not be healing you. This means you want to rely on food. Remember to use the bandos altar in the room as much as you can as well. This will save prayer and flasks. You'll be able to stay longer if you effectively use this. You can only use it once every 10 minutes. But if you're not soul splitting, you can solely rely on this using just protect from melee, as I've done this before. In terms of armor, you should wear C Singer's hood, Tetsu body, and Tetsu legs if you can. However, wearing a Torva set, including boots and gloves, will greatly increase your damage, and it's good if you're trying to soul split. However, you'll find it slightly harder to tank, but it shouldn't affect you too much. If you can't get either of these, you will be fine with Bandos or a Barrow set. This is because they have the same defense bonus, although Bandos has a small damage bonus and prayer bonus. You'll be fine with one of these, although you might find it slightly harder and you will not be able to stay for as long. For boots, you should wear Steadfasts, always, especially with Tetsu or Bandos or a Barrow set. They're expensive, but they do give good defensive bonuses, especially for boots. However, if you're wearing Torva, you should wear Torva boots to complete the set and get the set effect. Same goes for all next sets. And for Bandos, you can wear Bandos boots if you want to complete the set, but I'd still think Steadfast would be better to use. If you can't afford these, just wear Dragon boots. In the glove slot, you should wear pneumatic gloves. They are expensive, but they're good. Torva gloves, of course, to complete the Torva set. And Bandos gloves, if you can't afford them. If you can't afford Bandos gloves, you can set off for Barrow's gloves if you've done Recipe for Disaster. And if not, you can just go for Dragon Gauntlets. You can just buy them from the GE. Charged or uncharged, they're still worth using instead of nothing. For your amulets and your rings, you should wear a Saradoman's Whisper or an Amulet of Fury. If you can't afford these, you should wear a Amulet of Glory. In the ring slot, you should wear a Warrior Ring Eye, or an Onyx Ring Eye. You could wear a Berserker Ring, like I do. I find it much easier, so I don't have to keep switching rings, and it's cheaper. Uh, but if you can't afford any of these, just wear a Ring of Wealth. Great weapons to take the Bandos are the Chaotic Maul, any of the Dry Gores, but, if you can't get them, you can just settle for a gold sword. These two will do fine. You should also take vampirism and or penance. These will help your trip last much longer. Also, a scrimmager of vampirism is good if you can afford to take one. They're about 570k current GE price, which is fairly cheap and they will pay off. Also, bring Zamorak arrows, as I said earlier, they'll make your count faster and easier. The recommended stats you should have for soloing General Grador are 80 attack, 80 strength, and 85 defense. 80 attack is for the access to the Chaotic Maw. This is one of the best weapons you can use for Bandos. Without it, you will not be able to do much damage, therefore you won't be able to last as long. 80 strength, simply because you want the extra damage, and 85 defense for access to Port's armor. Now, in my opinion, defense is the most important combat skill, because when you take damage, you have to eat. When you eat, you lose adrenaline, and that lowers your DPS. So, the higher the defense, the higher the DPS. Now, 70 prayer if you're going to use piety, but 95 prayer if you're going to soul split with turmoil. Soul splitting will last you longer, but you can solo efficiently using piety and protect from melee. 96 herbal. Of course, for overloads, I don't use any pots because I don't have overloads, but I think they're the only ones that are really worth it because I can still do it well without them, but that would be very, very helpful. And 67 summoning for war toys, which will help you last much longer, and it's very, very, very useful. Guessing kill count is easy. You simply just want to find the lowest level, preferably the goblins, and just kill them, like so. You'll kill them fairly fast, and when your kill count 
which you can see here reaches 40. You're allowed to go into the boss room itself. If you take damage during kill count, the best thing to do is just use healing abilities. They will bring you back to full health, so you, you should not have to waste any food during kill count. You notice I've brought my Radiant Alchemist amulet. That's because when you get rune drops, they take up a lot of space, you don't want to have to waste food. So you simply cast High Alchemy on them, so you can turn them into coins, freeing up some space. Before you go in, make sure your quick cursor is selected to Top Mile, Soul Slit and Protect Item. And if you're on the prayer book, make sure it's Piety, Protect from Melee and Protect Item. If you don't have Top Mile or Soul Split, just use Deflect Melee. And if you don't have Piety, just use Protect from Melee. You can still st you can still sell the bandos with these. Make sure your ability bar is something you're comfortable with and know how to use, and your interface is also comfortable for you. It doesn't matter that much what it is as long as you know how to use it well and you're comfortable. Remember to stand here where I'm standing as the minions will be lured towards you meaning when you use multi-combat abilities you hit them. This helps for soul splits. So, you want to prayer this altar, because it can give you a prayer bonus, and use the same abilities I could do. That's Anticipation, Freedom, and Surge. This will keep your adrenaline going, so you have 100% for the start of the next kill. 